yeah, yesterday was the day I was like, okay, this marks the moment where my life is just, it, nothing's going to be boring ever again. <laughs> It's Jacqueline Forbes. We have the one and only Olivia O'Brien here. Thanks for being here today. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm so excited. We were just talking about before we got started that this interview was actually technically supposed to happen like two years ago before COVID when touring was a thing. But I think you had like a tour bus delay, got stuck at the border. So this is two years in the making. I'm glad we're finally here. Pretty crazy. Yeah, that was like, I think that was my first headline tour. So it was like 2019. Crazy. So much has changed. We've got a second album on the way. We'll chat tons about that. That's why we have Olivia here today. Obviously, we're going to chat about Episodes, which is part one of your two-part album. Am I correct with that? The whole album is called Episodes, and I'm releasing it in two parts. I'm calling it Season 1 and Season 2. So, yeah. so Season 1 is out now. We'll have the link down below. Everyone can listen, stream, do all the things. we got to start off by talking about the album artwork image. We got multiple different Olivias. We've got worlds of comedy, reality, drama. Was Love Awaits one of them? Tell me, what are all these characters? Characters, what does this mean to you and how does this play into your life? Basically, my concept for the album is that um, there's just so many different sides and parts of me, not only as a person, but also as an artist and in the kind of music that I make, the subject matter that I'm talking about, the production, just like the overall vibe of everything. And I, I don't want to put myself in a box in any capacity of my life. I don't want to be like, okay, I have to make an album that all sounds cohesive and I have to look I have to wear the same thing and everything. And like, I, I've, I've in the past gotten so caught up in that. And I feel like I've compromised. Um, like I'll, I'll, I'll put a song on an album just cause it fits with the album concept. And I'll take a song off that is actually better but just like doesn't technically fit. And I don't want to do that to myself. It also takes a long time to like really come up with a cohesive album concept and all this stuff. And I'm like, I write all different kinds of songs about all different kinds of things that don't necessarily sound the same. And I want to put them out on one album and I don't see why I can't. So I'm just going to do it. Um, and I also, it also represents like, I like to live my life like it's a movie. I wrote a letter about it and I put it posted on my Instagram when I announced um, the album coming out the first half. But yeah, I just like to live my life like I'm living in a movie or like I'm the main character because why not? It's literally like life is so boring if you don't do that. You And like not in a selfish way, you just like have to make everything a little bit fun at least if you can. So <laughs> I try. That is major Sagittarius energy. I can relate. I'm a Sagittarius. I totally right. get that. I think it's hard too because you can kind of like listen to all of the noise and people are saying, oh, if you're a niche, if you do this, like you're gonna be rewarded if you're super niche and have the super cat like and i hate the idea of being categorized and like labeled so i feel like the whole idea of the album makes so much sense it gives you that freedom that you don't have to be stumped to feel like oh well this doesn't fit the vibe of the album so we can't make it happen even though it's a great song and it would make sense for you as an individual yeah and also like i'm just inspired by a lot of different types of music and i feel like i'm always doing different things like one day i'll go in the studio and want to make a really sad song and the next day i'll make like a really fun upbeat song and the next day i'll make like a like punky like screaming like loud anthem so like i don't know i i just i don't want to ever limit myself and be like this is what i have to do this is what people want from me or whatever like i want to do everything that I want to do. <laughs> totally. And in terms of like the creative direction, did that kind of come to you in a vision? Like all of these different characters, it's very like pulled from the sixties. It feels like, are you very involved with that process or how does that like creative vision actually come to life? Yeah. So I work with uh, my creative director, Amber Park. I've worked with her for three years. I want to say since my first, since before my first album was even real. Um, she's great. I feel like she always like just gets it. She understands what I want to do. And we just like brainstorm whatever and just come up with the craziest ideas. Um, so the whole concept and everything of episodes was my idea. So I told her all about it. And, um, you know, she got a team together to be able to execute it and make all the little, we have a bunch of little videos of, for each song. Um, and I've just, I just love things that have a little bit of a vintage vibe to them. Um, it's just kind of the, the, wave I've been on recently, like especially even with the way I dress um, a lot of the time, like I'm super into like the 70s and the 60s. I did like a 60s variety show themed video um, for my song Better Than Feeling Lonely, which was kind of the start of like episodes, even though it's not on the album, it was kind of the start of this era of doing like the TV show movie thing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, she just, we, we just kind of put it together. I just wanted it to be like aesthetically pretty. And to me, like the vintage stuff is that like, I just, I just love it. So. Totally. Um, 
Yeah. And the hair and the makeup, it was so good. I was obsessed. We had this really epic, very like 60s kind of twiggy eye look and it was just so well done. And I was obsessed. Thank you. Okay, well, speaking of hair and makeup, that's actually the perfect segue into the next question. I saw you post this throwback with your purple hair, yes. long live, RIP. That was such a huge part, I feel like, of your brand and your image for a long time. I guess very on, on brand with the album release of you evolving and changing. Talk to me about the different looks that you have and where the purple hair went, why it's gone. Well, I kind of had the purple hair. I, I mean, I, I, it's kind of like a dumb story, but I, purple's always been my favorite color, but it was this guy that I was talking to like three years ago, his favorite color. And then every time I saw the color purple, I would think about him and I was like, fuck that. I don't want to think about that. This is my color. It's my favorite color since I was a child. Like, that's weird. I don't want to think about this weird man. So then I started just doing everything that I did purple. I was like, I wear purple clothes. I've only post things on Instagram that have the color purple in them. Everything I do is purple. So then everyone associated purple with me. And so I would stop thinking about this guy and purple was my thing. And I took kind of like took it back. Yeah. Um, and then after I had the purple hair, it like kind of made me, I feel like I kind of held onto it as a security blanket of like, oh, I can't compare myself to the pretty brunette girl or the pretty blonde girl. Cause like, I'm a girl with purple hair. Like I don't have to be pretty. I can be whatever I want to be. And like, I can be weird and what, like, it was like just this dumb th like thing in my head of like, this is my thing and like it's kind of protecting me from from comparing myself to other girls and like feeling insecure it was like and then i felt like it had to be my thing because i'd had it for so long um and i'd had purple hair like on and off before that before i like really went purple for a couple years and i just i don't know i just felt like i i change my hair all the time i get really bored easily as i was just saying i changed everything about myself all the time which goes back into the concept of the album and everything but yeah i just i felt like it was the beginning of quarantine when I washed the purple out of my hair. I did it at home because I just wanted to change. I was bored. And then I haven't gone back because I feel like I have got more confident and I don't need it anymore. And I still love the color purple, obviously, but I life kind of has its phases. And that was definitely a phase for me. And I loved it and I enjoyed it. And I think I will always cherish my purple era, but it's it's over now. So, yeah. Okay, well, speaking of saying goodbye to things, I feel like you avidly delete your Twitter um, on and off. I don't know if you can see there's a tweet here talking about hating Twitter, deleting it. And um, I cannot imagine having so many eyeballs on what I'm doing and so many unsolicited opinions and just so much noise. What's your relationship like with social media, understanding that you not, not depend on it, but you rely on it to share your music and connect with your fans? What's the best and the worst part about having literally everything online? I mean, it's a blessing and a curse. I feel like everything in life has its, you know, upsides and downsides. Um, that's just the way that things are. And I can talk shit about social media all I want and I will, and I will continue to do so. And so will all of my friends. But I'll be on TikTok the next day. Oh, sorry, I just was getting a call. I don't know if I paused oh. it or not. <laughs> okay. No, but we all rely on social media to communicate with each other, to stay in touch with our friends, to remind people that we exist. Like a lot of my friends, social media is their only job. That's what they do. That's how they make money. I wouldn't have my career if I didn't have social media because I promoted my SoundCloud cover on Twitter to Nash and that's how he found me. Like, uh, and then obviously I promoted myself from there like and helped, it's helped me gain a fan base and all this stuff. It's, I did a brand deal with Savage Fenty that paid for my whole tour. Like I, I benefit a lot from social media and I will always appreciate that aspect of it. I've met like friends on social media and guys that I ended up liking and all this stuff. Like it's it's so amazing. And, and we have anything we could ever imagine at our fingertips with our phones and with the internet. It's like the most insane thing ever. And with all of that great stuff comes all the negative stuff. And you just, it's just the way that it is now. And it sucks so bad. But what I've realized is the people that have the loudest voices are not the majority like i would never go and me and my friends and people that i know that are good people would never go and comment something mean on someone's post i would never do that maybe when i was like 10 years old and i was like a one direction stan and i found out harry styles was dating killer such and i was like i hate her like, didn't hate her yeah. um but yeah it's like it's, it's not true, though it's like when's the last time you scroll on instagram and you're like i hate this outfit this is so yeah. hideous like like no, people are not so sad about their own lives that they have to go on the internet to take it out on you and it's never personal you can't take things personally you can't compare yourself to anyone else and you have to understand that the mean comments are just because they're the loudest voice that you hear the most does not mean that they're the majority they're such a 
small portion they just are literally that's all they fucking do is go on and just talk and talk and talk and talk shit and right. try to be an asshole so um you know and it's it's hard to come to terms with all of that because you know i and i was always really insecure in high school and everything so i just take everything to heart and it's taken me years to really understand like okay maybe this isn't about me like i need to just be my own number one fan and if people are gonna hate on me like that's just it's just gonna happen so i'm i'm still working on that but i think i have a better perspective on it now than i used to oh that's awesome i love that um okay well speaking more of instagram stories you were talking about being a crafty bitch which i love this whole idea about making homemade gifts what have you made for people tell me give me some inspo well one of my i mean i don't think he's gonna watch this but one of my best friends um he lives in london and it's his birthday in a couple weeks i'm going and I made him a friendship bracelet because we Aww. never see each other. And I just thought it would be cute. And I learned how to make friendship bracelets. But that's my first and last gift. You tried, we did it. Well, all my friends, like, all my friends are like, they can buy whatever they want whenever they want. Like, I don't want to buy them like some random thing and like, they don't care about it or like they could buy it themselves. Like I sometimes like, I don't know. Like, I feel like they whenever they want something, they just buy it. Yeah. So I'd rather do something cute and like make it um i feel like it's part of getting older too like i feel like well one of my resolutions actually this year i take them very seriously i was like i never want to buy a card from a store again like i want to hand paint and like make yeah. cards and i love like you know doing crafts and stuff so That's that was cute. my goal this year and it's so funny i'm like oh my god am i growing up am i becoming an adult like you realize those sentimental things they're gonna remember that versus that bag that whatever you got them right it's so fun and it's so cute and people i found that people like enjoy end up enjoying it more like and i i wrote a song for stas for her birthday we did it last year too and we made a video me and um my other friends drew and sydney Aww. but we made it we like one upped ourselves this year we made i like went into my studio and like recorded a full little song and like i don't know how to produce or anything i got a beat off of youtube and i like rap on it it's like the craziest thing ever but i'm so it i it's so good it's so That's funny the thing, you with it which is so mm -hmm. much more valuable when they like exactly well speaking of stoss that actually again segues beautifully into um the next question that i had when i talk about sociopath i have this very uh, epic screenshot of who was this getting their neck sliced open oh um, bro what's my friend yeah so we had a lot of uh your friends murder in there mm -hmm. so what was it like shooting with all of your friends and again walking through that concept it was very like horror movie circa early 2000s tell me about that whole experience it was great so we wanted to obviously do something a little scary and spooky to match the vibe of the song but also we don't want to make it actually scary to people so we tried to add a little element of like comedy like there was one part at where drew and sydney they improv it and it was like drew was like hide and and Sydney was like, you want to go to Hyde right now? Which Hyde is like the nightclub that we all go to in LA or used to, I don't, it's not open any, I mean, I think hopefully it opens back up this year, but anyway, that was like our favorite club to go to. And so I just, they like improv that whole thing. I thought it was the funniest thing ever. We, I got Dave Stoss her little lines in the beginning. And like, I don't know, we just tried to make it as funny as possible while still like having a little bit of gore. Like we put all the little, all the blood and all of that stuff. And I got to stab a man in the end, which, Love that for me. Incredible. <laughs> I want to talk about too, um, the strategy. You had this really cool, like little TikTok, um, I guess, marketing strategy. It was like so well done where you were pitching your two different singles. You're like, my label will only let me pick one. Which one do you see on your feet or do you like better kind of thing? And I thought it was, well, one, the most like intelligent thing to do. It was so well done. Everyone was so hyped over the songs. It was between Sociopath and what other single was it? It's called Bitch Back. It's on the second half of my album. Right. I ended up I getting a feature on it. So it's like, it wouldn't have even come been out. Like it, was, it would have been a completely different song if I had put it out first. Um, but yeah, I just came up with that idea randomly. I was like, I don't know which one to put out. And like my, my label wanted Bitch Back and I wanted to just put out Sociopath because um, I don't even know why. I just, well, it's a, it's also the track number one on episodes, season one. So it's like, feels like the right thing. Um, but all the songs are so different. Like now I'm like, I, I always wonder like if people are expecting all the songs to be similar to like what I did with Sociopath and they're just so all different from each other that I don't know if people are like, I don't know if they're expecting what it is. I think that's kind of good though. It'll keep them guessing. And I think the reality of like how people listen to music nowadays too, everyone is so open to, you know, different genres. I don't think that is the expectation. So I'm sure, yeah. I mean, okay. we'll see the comments down below. I'm sure everyone will be loving it. Um, actually kind of speaking of TikTok too, something that I wanted to talk about is, yeah, I mean, I guess more like the whole strategy side of it. I'm curious your thoughts on it because 
we all know TikTok is what's dictating the top 100s right now. When you're writing a song, whether you're in the studio, whether to you're thinking of how you're gonna make the music video or, or release it, are you thinking, okay, no. well, what would be a good 30 second clip that someone could do a little like, you know, not at all? No, no, that's I dumb. Well, I mean like- after Some people are though, that's the thing, right? For like people that like don't want to have a long lasting career and just want to get a song out of their asshole. Like, I'm sorry, am I allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Uh, I think TikTok is a great tool to use. And like, obviously my song Jocelyn like did some cool stuff on there. And like, if things happen, it happens. If a song is good, people will use it on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Because that's where, it, not. it's not just like TikTok songs blow up. It's also songs that blow up end up being on TikTok regardless anyway. So, right. and I, I, I don't want to do anything with the intent of, with any like weird underlying like reasoning behind it. Like I make music to make music and I do it for myself and for my fans. And I just want to make good music. Like I'm never going to do something like with, with that in mind. I don't know. A viral I, TikTok trending topic. Like just it, it's make good just music. not, that's not how I work. It's not like the kind of yeah. career that I want to have. I don't even know what kind of career I want to have, but it's not that one, so. <laughs> Again, you are somehow segueing into my next question so beautifully. Great. Speaking of your career, um, I love this video. You're pouring 1942 into this Spotify um, plaque that you got for hitting mm -hmm. 1 billion streams. Epic accomplishment. You should feel so proud about that. Thank Speaking you. of other career kind of accomplishments or like bucket list things that you want to do, what else is on your checklist? Um, I try not to myself too crazy of goals because I don't like to be disappointed I'd rather just like vibe and see what happens and like I didn't go into this uh, this career path thinking that anything would happen with me I've already done so much more than I could ever imagine and I'm happy with everything that I have and obviously you know I want I want more I think everyone you know that you set goals for yourself even if you don't set goals like life you want it like life to kind of be an uphill until you retire or whatever your plans are for your life i obviously want to to keep getting more successful and and touring going more places i want to tour in europe i want to play you know main stage at a bunch of crazy festivals all over the world like i want to do a lot of things but i don't set specific specific things for myself because i that just scares me and i'm scared of setting myself up for some kind of disappointment. Like I'd rather just be like, yeah, this is where we're at. Hey, that's dope. But if I don't, then I don't really care. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Well, let's talk about um, your other like musical inspirations. I know you're a big Fleetwood Mac fan and I'm curious who is on your playlist right now. What are you listening to? What helps inform what you want to create? I feel like, it, I mean, it, when people ask me who I'm inspired by musically and what kind of music especially for this past project, like what inspired me. I don't, e nothing even comes to mind because it's not ever one specific person or song. Like, I'll listen to something and then play it in a session and be like, we should use like this similar sound to this. And then we'll end up going a completely different direction every time. I swear, every time I try to like, not rip something off, but use something as like a yeah. starting point, I always go a completely different direction. So I don't even know. Also, well, what I'm really into, an artist I'm really into right now is Pink Panthers. She's okay. insane. So good. Obviously found her on TikTok. She's like, um, has a couple songs in there that are popping, but all her songs are a minute long. I'm like, I will literally take my money and I will pay you to make longer songs so that I, they don't, they literally, I turn it on as soon as I get into it, it's over. I'm so oh, angry, no. but she's so good. She's so good. She does like drum and bass stuff, but then like lo-fi, like, and she likes has like a really mellow voice, but Ooh. she's so, so good. Um, it's so insane. Like the people you find on TikTok, you're like, how are you not more well known? Like, there's so much talent on there. It's wild yeah. who you come across. So yeah. crazy. Um, do you have any like kind of nostalgic throwbacks? Like, I mean, I grew up on like the Avril's. Like, do you have these baseline people that like made you want to be a singer? Um, I don't know about like made me want to be a singer because I never like I didn't plan my life. Like, I when I was a little kid, I wanted to be. I call it a triple threat. I wanted to be a singer, actor, dancer. Yeah. And also a fashion designer. And I oh, literally have diaries that I wrote all the time. And it's like, I'm going to be this blah, 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 blah. And when I was like seven. And then by the time I got to middle school, I was, I was like, no, that's not going to happen. And that's when I started like getting insecure and 
all that stuff. And I was, I thought that I had to go on a regular career path, go to college and everything. And then after I Hate You, I Love You had blown up, I was just doing covers and stuff for fun. So after that happened, then I was like, okay, I can be a singer. That's great. So I didn't, I wasn't like trying to, to be one. And that sounds so like crazy because obviously I loved my career and I'm so happy. And this is what I would have chosen to do if I thought it was possible, but I never thought it was possible. But as far as like artists that inspired me as a, when I was young or when I was starting out, I have a tattoo of Amy Winehouse naked playing guitar. Yes. Cool. Um, so she's like my number one inspiration for writing and her voice is insane. I wish I could sing like her. She's just like the most talented person ever. Um, when I was younger, my mom, like I pretty much grew up on Beyonce. I love Beyonce. Anytime someone tells me they don't like Beyonce, which has been happening recently. I'm like, I was gonna say, who's saying that? Who is my and she doesn't like Beyonce. Well, she was like, I don't know. Like I would never, like I wouldn't like put her on. Like I just like, she just like doesn't do it for me. It's okay. Beyonce. Okay, noted. Um, well, it's so interesting though. Like I think it it's, honestly so nice that you kind of went into it with like the intuition of a creative you're like i just like doing this this is what's happening there's no crazy plan and like it just is what it is and i feel like that's actually kind of so unheard of nowadays um so it's good to know that little baby olivia wasn't just sitting every night saying i want to be a singer i want to be a singer um baby olivia speaking of we have this epic photo slide of you as a small child and you were talking about how this might have been the peak of your life this this what? time of what made your childhood so special and goggled Olivia so happy? Well, I think up until like, so I, I ended up going to Catholic school for fourth grade and I skipped third grade. When I switched over, I skipped a grade and I was the youngest in my class. I had gone to Montessori school my whole life, which is like the most chill thing mm -hmm. ever. I would write songs and poems all day and like sing songs and it was crazy. Um, so I feel like fourth grade is when things kind of started going downhill for me because I was like, kids are mean now and I don't get to sit in a circle and bang on a little tiny drum and right. write a- And you're with older kids, so. Yeah, exactly. I was older, I was just like so scared. And then I ended up going to Catholic school then on through high school. Um, so my childhood is like my, I, before then I was just like, I had no cares in the world. I. I just had a great time. I had a great imagination. I believed in fairies and mermaids and mm -hmm. thought I was a half blood for a lot of my life. Percy Jackson, like I'm not kidding. Yeah. Know, made theories. We literally like made up theories about how we are descendants of gods. Oh, I thought incredible. That related, distantly related to Poseidon because he played water polo and he has sea green eyes like Percy Jackson. Mm -hmm. Not Love just. It. And I literally had plastic swords and I would walk through my yard. I, had, I used to live on a, before my parents got divorced, I lived on this big property and we had a horse and we would take plastic swords and we would walk around my property and pretend we were fighting monsters. Like, and I had like an old thing I turned into a, a fucking camp cabin. I that's was, incredible that's so good it was funny i actually was listening to you were on a podcast or something recently i was listening through and you're like i think every kid actually needs to get bullied a bit because it made me build character do you oh, still stand by that i'm pro bullying all the way no i'm just kidding <laughs> that's the sound bite out of context olivia I'm, supports bullying i'm pro bullying towards myself i needed it i needed it well like i obviously was like the worst thing ever and it was horrible and i like became severely clinically depressed and like had to go to therapy every day and like still have to take medication and to like deal with it but silver I'm, lining look where I'm, you are I'm, now we're, we're learning we're growing again i don't know how you make these segues i'm not even i don't know how you're doing this this is a photo of you uh crying so speaking of uh, mental health and all of that i feel like as much as you do joke about it you are very vulnerable and honest whether it's mental health conversations or just about being i think you had said hyper emotional one time um and i think that is such a huge um reason why so many of your fans feel connected to you and you are so real about all of that have you had like a standout fan moment that you look back on again pre-covid or maybe i guess online like during covid or whatever where a fan has said something that has moved you so much or you just had an interaction that you're like i will never forget that um i mean just because of the type of music that i make and the things that i talk about i get a lot of at my meet and greets and stuff like i lot there's a lot, a lot of times people are crying or, or they like write me like letters about how I've helped them with their mental health and everything. I try to keep all of the letters. Sometimes I will like forget things at venues, but like I have most of the, almost everything people have given me 
um, on tour. And like the other day when I was packing at my house, I found a bunch of letters from fans and it just like made me want to cry again. So I have a lot of experience and it always makes me cry when they cry to me in person. Cause I'm just like, please stop. Like, you know that I cry a lot. You can't cry to me right now. Cause then I will start crying and then it's not fair. And then we're all crying. And then like, we all look too much. Okay. We're just like, no, you stop crying. No, you stop crying. It's like, okay, like we need, we need to stop being embarrassing. But like, it's not, it's embarrassing for me. Cause it's like, why, why am I doing that? Yeah, you're like, um, I needed you to be my rock. And now you're crying. Like, am I okay? Like, yeah, I'm like, it's, I'm a mess. I can't, I, if I see someone crying, I start crying immediately. So please try to hold back your tears, guys. If you feel like crying in front of me, I'm not the person to cry to because I will cry. Okay, so everyone, listen up. No crying on tour. Olivia just posted her postponed and kind of rescheduled dates. We'll have them down below as well, so you can check out and hopefully catch her on tour. This is going to be in 2022. Is that the plan right now? No, it's uh, fall. Oh, it's like happening soon. We're just so behind. I'm here in Toronto, Canada, and we're like not even full, fully vaccinated or vaccinated yet. Yeah. So we are behind, yeah, but we're really, really well. I'm fully vaccinated now. I think most of my friends are. I know Drew is. Hopefully soon. Um, We'll see, we'll mm -hmm. see. But either way, if you are in the States, catch Olivia. If you're in Toronto, you will not be able to, unfortunately. But either way, uh, listen to episodes. We have part, or season one out now. We have season two coming out at an announced date yet, or is it still secret? Uh, I don't like to say any, even any approximations anymore because things always get pushed back. Okay. But like me, this summer, maybe early fall. We'll, we'll see. keep you guessing. We'll keep you guessing. Uh, well, Olivia, thank you so much for hopping on here today. I really appreciate your time. I know you have a house you just moved into and things to do. So thank you so much. Everyone down below, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. What's your favorite song off the first part of the album? And we will see you all very soon. <laughs> thank you so much Bye. for having me. <laughs> of course. <laughs>